Good morning, Canesville High School students. This is March 20th, and I hope all, all are well. I just want to remind you to keep your mind healthy, keep your uh, body healthy, and also keep your heart healthy by doing a lot of different things every single day. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you about was the book I'm currently reading. I finished the other two. I finished the series on um, Japan, and I skimmed the ending of that um, horror book by Joe Hill. I didn't quite like that. However, I'm really liking this book I'm reading. It's called The 50s. And here's an image of it by David Halberstam. Uh, it's really a very interesting uh, sort of historical view of the, of the 1950s in chronological detail. Uh, I just think it's really an interesting read uh, if you're interested in that time period, especially uh, if you're studying it. It's, uh, it's quite an interesting read. So I'll like, keep you in touch about how I'm doing on that. I'll probably finish it by next week or so. Um, so I've been doing that. I did a little more running today. I added about a half mile more to my running, and I did write letters. I did write five, which my goal was, but I did write four. One of two to the governor, actually thanking him for his leadership, and I wrote one to the nurses at St. Agnes Hospital. So um, make sure you're doing something for others as well. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about two two uh, things issues going on in our class, uh, all of which, of course, are practice grades. But I do want to keep you. Uh, Kind of your mind fresh by giving your activities. So if we can go to our uh, our website here, I want to just point out what we're working on is two things. The first is if you look under quarter three under the folder called oops this is the wrong class. Let me click back here to say where at here we go. Okay, so if you look under the folder, you'll see here under must complete under quarter three. If you click on quarter three, you'll see here kite runner argumentative essay there's there's one of these for each class by the way um, there's kite runner of course a long way gone and in the time of the butterflies and if you click on it and you open it you're going to see a series of activities that need to be kind of completed in sequential order none of these of course are a graded assignments the argument in dbq at the very very end of it i'm going to click on that for you this is a graded assignment but it is not obviously due until um, we get back. So it's if you're having difficulty with it, you're having some hard times understanding what to do, that's okay because we're going to work on it when we get back and it will count. However, in the meantime, you can get set up to do all of these activities on your own and then you won't have to worry about spending class time doing it. So let me just review with you. It's an argument. You see the classical argument structure is the same as we've been doing all year long, okay, where you have a claim, you reinforce the claim, counterclaim, rebuttal, call to action. Then you'll see you have to cite the sources, okay? The sources are already given to you. There should be six of them. And in your argument, you need to weave those in. Now, everybody's doing the same argument, and that is what, how should the U.S. get involved in international affairs? Now, if you're doing Kite Runner, you're talking about Afghanistan, and the sources are about that. If you're doing uh, In the Time of Butterflies, you're talking about Dominican Republic, and there's some sources about that. If you're doing Long Way Gone, it's Sierra Leone. But all of them are addressing the same question. How should we get involved? And your job is to weave in three of the sources I've given you at any point in the classical argument. And then you must also weave in the book we're reading. So four total sources that are cited correctly using MLA style basic requirement. And this uh, assignment is broken down into a series of steps. The preliminary research step, the precy of the documents, you only need to read, uh, write the first two sentences of the precy for each of the six documents you've been given. Then you do a work cited. Then you write an intro, an outline, rough draft, and final. None of these grades count against you. Uh, however, the final argument of DBQ will be due fourth quarter whenever we return. Uh, whatever day that might be, we will uh, give a little bit of time to review everything, and then it's due at some point fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know when that is yet. But that, that is when it will be due. So that's the first issue. The second thing we're looking at as well, once again, this is practice, should be listed also under um, grammar resource. You'll see it says must complete. So this is to continue our grammar work. And there's a, a folder called adjective clauses combining. And just like the last one, there's a series of activities set up for you to help practice uh, on our journey to become a uh, little stronger writers and more varied writers. You've done prepositional phrases, participial phrases, absolute phrases, and um, now we're going to do clauses. And you'll see here a setup of some activities for that in order. So complete each one. I give you feedback on it, and then 
ultimately, once again, fourth quarter is an adjective clauses quiz, but not to fourth quarter when we have a chance to fine tune uh, all of what we've been doing. However, I do want to address now, since I have time, um, one of the concerns with the first assignment I've seen here, and I have copied here for you three different sentences that were written by your classmates. And I want to address how um, each one have a small problem with it. So let's take a look at the first one here. And I want to highlight the issue here, okay? So Madison's two dogs, Oreo and Skeeter. This is correct here not to have a comma, by the way, because it's called essential. She might have more than two dogs, so this is sort of essential. It's very specific, so you do not put a comma there. That's correct. The problem I have with is this phrase. This is, an, um, this is a participial phrase. If you'll notice here, it's correct. It's a nice phrase, but it's next to this word floor. Okay, it should not be there. It should actually be moved, okay, to the front of the sentence, okay? And that would make it much clearer because then it's snarly and skidding Madison's dogs um, competed. That would be a much, much stronger place to put it. Um, and here, by the way, is our adjective clause. I'm going to make that a different uh, yellow here. Now, here's a second sentence underneath of it. Oreo and Skeeter, Madison's two dogs. That's correct. You see, because Madison's two dogs is not as specific as their names, so that's why you put in commas, competed for the hard-boiled egg that bounced on the floor. That's correct. But look at this, snarling and skinny on a smooth tile. Once again, it's next to floor. So that's not quite the right place for it. The third one is down the bottom here. Okay, I'm going to move up. Snarling and skinny on the smooth tile, Madison's two dogs. And here's the issue with the commas. Okay. Everything else is perfect about this. Snarling and skidding's right, but you see the comma here and the comma here are not correct because this is specific. It's called it's called essential, so you can't put the commas there. Okay, so those are two of the smaller issues we've been addressing. But for those who've submitted work so far, you're doing a very very nice job on that. So once again, um, this is an update for you on 3:20. I will not see you guys again until next Tuesday. I hope all is well with you and your family.